Um, have you ever had this question and you ask yourself, why is God going to release Satan after a thousand years, after all the evil that he has done? Why? Why will Satan be released again? Now, we have to f first, first, let's check the verse which says uh, Satan will be released after a thousand years. You know, he'll be bound for a thousand years and then released again at some point. Now, and when the thousand years has expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Mm, he'll be released and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is the sand of the sea. So these are so many people. Why would God let Satan again, after all that he has done and been bound now, is released again to deceive people who their number is the, is, the, is, the, is the sand of the sea? Those are so many people. And they went up, they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. You see, all these people who will be deceived after a thousand years, after the millennial kingdom, they will still go against God and, uh, and the God will devour them with fire from heaven. Of course, being deceived by Satan. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now, ask yourself this reason. Why, why would God again... Let loose Satan, the deceiver, to come and destroy things again. Why? What would be the reason? Now, as we read these verses, we wonder, what would be the reason? What would be the reason? First, we must admit that there are some biblical questions that we cannot answer. This side of glory, because uh, God has chosen to reserve some mysteries to himself. <laughs> you see? So... Yes, he will release him, and uh, after that, of course, people will gather the Gog and Magog war, and they will surround, you know, they will surround Jerusalem, and they'll, they'll want to destroy it. Where Jesus is, ruling for a thousand years, but then fire will come from heaven and will destroy everyone. That fire will come and destroy each and every person who will be in that uh, uh, war. And their number will be as the sand of the sea. Just imagine all those people destroyed. So, 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 so many. So many people destroyed. Now, why would uh, a loving God do this? Like I've just told you, let me just show you here. You see, God, uh, there are some things that we cannot really understand about God. And uh, the Bible tells us this very clearly. Deuteronomy 29, verses 29. Okay, it tells us, it tells us something here that um, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of his law. There are some secret things which are not revealed to us. Sometimes you may ask ourselves, why would a loving God do this? And also, let's, let's see also what the Bible says in Romans before I get to this story. Romans uh, 11.33 because uh, th th this is just explaining so clearly all oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor you see there are some there are some unsearchable things of God there are some things you cannot really uh, explain why God is doing this. Why Why do you have to let Satan lose again? After all those years he has deceived people and then now he's been uh, uh, bound and now there's peace and then he lets him lose again. Why? 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 You see, yet, as believers, even if we cannot always understand something about God's word, his will or his ways, we can be sure that he remains ever faithful. Do you know God is faithful? He remains ever faithful, true, and trustworthy. And in, his, and, uh, uh, in, in light of that, 
Our job remains to obey what we do understand as quickly, fully, and as well as much as we are able. Now, even if we may not be able to answer why God releases such Satan, eh, we can uh, suggest that uh, some possible reasons and motivation based on an understanding of the entirety of the word of God. Now, at the beginning of the millennium, this beginning of the millennium, um, only believers will be alive because uh, we understand very well the others will have been, uh, you know, they will have been killed in the war and uh, they went to hell and the uh, antichrist and false prophets cast to the lake of fire and Satan bound a thousand years in the bottomless pit. So everyone else will be in the millennium now. We can tell they will be only believers. Okay. Some who live through the tribulation period and some who come back with the Lord at his second coming. So it will be a, a time of uh, peace unparalleled uh, in history. Okay. Just like the way the Bible tells us in uh, the book of Isaiah, it will be to so much peace, so much peace that uh, we have never seen. <laughs> this, is a, this is a peace that uh, people are looking for, the UN, the world, but there will never be peace until Jesus comes. So this is the peace which will be there at that time. See what the Bible says, and he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall bear their swords unto the plowshares, and their spears unto proning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. This is actually, this quote, this quote exactly is in the UN, at the, uh, at the, at the gates of the UN out there. This, that's what they want to achieve, but they can't achieve it without God. And of course, the Bible says the same thing in Joel. Joel 3.10. Joel 3.10. It tells us about how much peace it will be. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hoods into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. You see? And also, finally, we can read Micah. It's, it's good to confirm these uh, verses sometimes. Uh, not just to give stories and, uh, and people say, ah, this guy is just giving us his stories. No, it's good to confirm. And the, and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. You see, the Bible is repeating over and over again the same thing, that there will be peace. Okay? There will be peace. This will be a time of peace. Now, and we understand this peace, when Jesus will be ruling on the throne of David, eh? An imposing, uh, and of course imposing a benevolent theocracy on all of his creation, Jesus will ensure that everyone has every need fulfilled. So every need will be fulfilled. While still he will not be tolerating sin so prevalent in uh, today's uh, society, he will also be, you know, because these people will be mortal, eh? the ones that will be ruled here, the people who, who pass from the, the tribulation time, in a mortal body into the millennial kingdom they will still be you know flesh and blood they will still be able to die and uh, do normal things so god will not tolerate any of those uh, weird weird uh, things that happen today of course the bible tells us this let me just show you eh, how he will deal psalms uh, 2 verses 7 I, I i like to show the verses so that you can confirm and understand what i'm saying i will declare and uh, uh, the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have begotten thee. See, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for the, thine inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. It's talking about the millennial kingdom. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. You see what God will be doing? He'll not be joking around. Eh? Be wise now, therefore. O kings, be instructed in judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. You see, there'll be, for those who want to be evil, they'll have to fear. But others who are good, they'll rejoice, you know, with trembling, always fearing the fear of God. Kiss the son, lest he be uh, angry, and uh, you perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all that put their trust in him. So, the Bible tells us that will, uh, Jesus will be ruling, but uh, he'll be ruling with a rod of iron. Let me show you. A rod of iron. So, yes, yes, it will be a good time. But, of course, he will be strict with what is right. And he shall over 
And he that overcometh and give my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. This is talking about Jesus. And he shall, uh, 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 Jesus and his saints, of course, we are the saints who will be given the power. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Jesus, of course, he'll be the king and will be kings. You know, the king of kings will be ruling with him. He shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father. You remember the same verse that we read in Micah and uh, the other verses? And I will give him the morning star. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says in the churches. So you see, the Bible is explaining very well how Jesus will be ruling. How Jesus will be ruling. And uh, just finally, let me show you another verse. I like to explain and show verses because it's really so important. Just bear, bear with me. It's really so important to understand the context. See what the Bible says. And I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat on him was called faithful and true. So he will be faithful and he will be true. So there will be no uh, jokes about his rulership and in righteousness he's that ju he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire blah 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 that's that's a god who will be coming jesus will be faithful and true so you will not mess around this time but he will be so kind he'll be so good and so just to show people this is how justice looks like yes there will be punishment but he is so just in a way that uh, as he rules if you're good you will live well and there will never be a problem with you. If you are bad, you will face the consequences. So, we can only imagine such a time as, you know, what we call heaven on earth. And the believers who live through the tribulation, they will be mortal. Remember, that is one thing. And uh, another, one thing about these people, because they are mortal, most of the people who have just uh, crossed uh, in their mortal bodies, eh, they will... Uh, they will live and uh, repopulate the earth during the millennial kingdom. Now, without devastation of sin taking its toll, we can imagine how much the population will increase during the millennium. It will be enormous. It will be enormous. It will be so huge. People will be, you see, the Bible says that uh, uh, if somebody dies at 100 years, it will be called, uh, you know, it will be a, a death which is un so unfortunate. Because people will be living <laughs> the same way like Noah was living, 900 years and things like that. So you can imagine how many people, you can see your grandfather, your great-grandfather, your great-great-great. So how many people will be there? So many. Almost incomp incomprehensible. Now, all those who are born during the millennium will enjoy the benefits and the blessings of Christ's reign on earth. But they, they will still be born with a sin nature. And they will still have to, they, they still will have to uh, freely repent, remember? Freely repent and believe the gospel. So, they'll have to personally choose Christ as Savior and Lord. So, it will not be just a walk in the park, yes. It will be a walk in the park at some point. But he'll be showing you people, you're living, you, you know, you've been complaining. People in the world have been complaining, oh, it's Satan, it's Satan who has been deceiving us. Now, here Satan has been, <laughs> has been bound. Are you still going to say he's Satan? God wants to show us now. You see, man naturally has sin. You see, millennium, the millennial time, the millennium will enjoy the benefits and blessings of Christ's reign on earth. But these people will still be born with sin nature. And they'll still have to freely repent. This is something you have to understand. They'll have to freely repent and believe the gospel. Yet... Yet something here that you have to understand. At the end of the millennial, <laughs> when the millennial is almost over the thousand years, Satan will be loosed and will be able to deceive a vast multitude of uh, people to follow him in one uh, final rebellion against the Lord. Uh, it, seems that the, uh, it seems that um, the further humanity gets from the end of the tribulation and the start of millennium, the more they will take for granted how good they have it. And some may even um, harbor doubts and, uh, about the goodness of God. <laughs> some will start saying, no, oh, God is not really good and blah, 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 blah. You see, human beings are like that. Even though the number of those who rebel 
uh, with Satan are said to be as the sand of the sea because they will be really, really huge. Those who will rebel against uh, uh, God. Like I've told you, families will grow and they'll be grow even much more because people are not dying and people are not uh, are living so long. So you can imagine how large the number of people, mortal people will be like after the end of the thousand years. Hmm? They may still be a minority compared to, you know, uh, 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 even if though a number of uh, those who will rebel, because there will be so many, yeah? hmm? those who rebel with Satan are said to be as the sand of the sea, there may still be a minority compared to the number who do not rebel. Because the Bible tells us, yes, people will rebel, but there will still be a number of them probably will not rebel. Uh, let me just show you eh? Revelation, uh, Revelation 20. Uh, verse 7. It's good to check. You see how they will rebel. And when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to the battle. The number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So many. And they went up of the on the breadth of the, the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city and fire came down from God and, and uh, devoured them. So, we see that this will be a large number. But of course, not everyone will be deceived. Not everyone. It, uh, the, those who will not be deceived will still be a large number of souls, of course, who will be left, who will not uh, join the, the, uh, Satan's army. But of course, there will be a lot of, of them because the Bible says, as the sand of the sea, people will join Satan. You see how mankind can be and why God has to make sure that... Uh, <laughs> he will release Satan again, at least to show human beings, uh, you're, still, uh, you're still human beings and you have to put all your trust in God. Undoubtedly, uh, un undoubtedly, one of the primary reasons that I believe God will give this picture of what will happen is to demonstrate the deep-seated sin nature which is inherent in all humanity. There's a deep sin which is in all humanity. And that's what God will be wanting to, to show. Let's see Jeremiah 17 verses 9. God will be wanting to show this and show you. Guys, you, it is you. You just need. You just need to trust in me. Stop trusting in your own self. The, the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, our hearts are really wicked. They are wicked. They are wicked. We are wicked people. We are wicked with people. Additionally, God is trying to tell us something about his nature as displayed during the millennium. Huh? He's trying to show us his nature. What, what kind of nature uh, does God show us here? Okay. His grace and goodness will always be on display continually. He has shown us his nature, but as the uh, as the end of the but at the end of the a thousand years, eh, he will have zero tolerance for rebellion because he says it in the in the Bible. When it happens, he will show no mercy and offer no second chances at the, that time. This time, he will show no mercy. Yes, they will go out and try to you know fight him and and uh, God has shown his side of mercy over through when we are living here on earth right now. But during that time, he will also show his other side of anger so that people can be able to understand. At that time, he will be quick to judge and the final rebellion of Satan and sinful man will be over in a flash of fire. Just one flash of fire, like the Bible has told us. Fire will come in hev from heaven and poop, you're done. After this, the final judgment... The final judgment of the dead will take place. That is a, what you call the great white throne judgment. Okay? And this one, of course, is explained in Revelation 20, 11. Revelation 20, 11. Revelation 20, verses 11. You can see that great white throne judgment. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on him, on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no found, uh, found, and uh, was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, small, great, and rich turn before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, everyone, even those who are in Titanic, those who are everywhere, those who died in the sea. And death and hell delivered, and uh, death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. Why is uh, why do we hear the dead and hell? The death is everyone who has not received Christ. If you 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 have Christ, then it means you are not dead. You are alive in Christ. So anyone who is not alive, he's called the dead. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So you've been able to see this great white throne judgment will be for everyone who has lived since the time of Adam and was not a believer. All of them, they will come here. Even those who will die after being deceived the second time by Satan. Those who fire will come from heaven and devour them. Just imagine... After having living a thousand years with Christ, a thousand years, you live, you have a very beautiful time, your children are flourishing, you can see your uh, 20, 30, 100 generation uh, grandfather, they still there, you can enjoy and laugh and uh, have all the good time, and you still be deceived by Satan? The heart of man is wicked. The heart of man is wicked. The heart of man is wicked. Why? Why? Why would it be like this? You see, eternity is uh, something that we have to look forward to. Okay? Yes, people are looking, they're only thinking about themselves right now. They're thinking about, I need to have this, I need to have a good time. But they don't know that the only way you can have a good time is by believing in Jesus Christ and putting all your thoughts and minds and everything that you have on Jesus Christ. You see, after this, eternity will begin with every aspect of uh, sin gone all the time. Every aspect of sin. Because all these people, after they have been uh, cast into hell, Jesus himself, he will start over. He will start over again. He will start over again. And he will, you know, build a new earth and a new heaven and a... Uh, uh, the old will be gone and the new will be have come. Okay? And of course, finally, God uh, will be trying to reinforce through this, through this, seeing Satan being loosed and uh, coming and deceiving people in the Gog and Mag Magog war, all these kind of things. God is trying to reinforce and to show, to show something, some very important lessons concerning Satan himself. He wants to show that Satan... He has been a deceiver all through. He's been a deceiver. He's been a deceiver. Especially, he wants to show this to believers. Those who will be now with him forever. He will want to show them, guys, remember one thing? Follow and trust me and follow me 100%. Satan has been a deceiver all through. And the heart of man has been wicked. First, that he has been and always will be the enemy of humanity. Of course, thank God that time he'll have been thrown away. But he'll have wanted to show a lesson to show that you guys, ever since the beginning, you've been believing in the wrong and the wrong guy. Ever since the beginning, you remember the first lie? You will be like God, knowing good and evil, from Eve and Adam. Satan, the deceiver. Now, as as uh, God has fixed his love on us, Satan has also a special Hatred on us. Ever since Satan's fall, uh, that is in Isaiah 14, when he fell and uh, when he was saying, I'll be like the most high, I'll go high up above the mountain and said, settle in the, in the sides of the north and be like God. Remember Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 when he fell? He was uh, in that tree in the Garden of Eden. Just go and uh, check uh, my video, what had infected the tree of knowledge. Just go and watch that video. You'll be able to understand what, who was in that tree. He had possessed that tree. Now, Satan has been the adversary of believers and is aptly described as the ultimate deceiver of mankind. Is the ultimate deceiver of mankind. And this one is explained very well in uh, the book of John. John 8 uh, verses 44. 
is the deceiver of mankind. See what the Bible says here. Uh, John 8, 44. It says, you are of, the f of your father the devil. You see? And the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. So everyone who is a liar, everyone who does wrong things, is of his father the devil. The devil, the liar. The devil, the liar. Are you seeing this? Are you understanding this? And 1 John 2.22, it tells us also something else here. 1 John 2.22. See, who is a liar but he that deny that uh, Jesus is Christ? He is the Antichrist. He's an antichrist that denies the father and the son. You see, someone who is always denying God, he's of his father the devil. If you deny God, you, you're of your father. You are of your father, the devil. And all, all he can give or promise man is death and destruction. Nothing else that Satan can promise man. Huh? There's nothing else that he can promise man except death and destruction. You have to understand this. This is something that you have to put in mind. That Satan does not come for anything else. The thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and to destroy. And I am come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus comes to give us life. But Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan. And you have to understand that. So Satan is also uh, uh, shown here in this um, explanation of why you know God has to let him lose for another for after a thousand years. Satan is also shown here to be a truly defeated foe, very defeated foe. He's defeated, okay. And uh, his ultimate doom is Satan is a uh, certain. Sorry, his ultimate doom is certain. It is already. <laughs> there, out there, along with the doom of all who follow him. So God is trying to remind us that Satan is a created being who is powerless before him. He's already defeated. But you, if you follow him, you're following a defeated man. You're de following someone who is defeated. Now, would you follow someone who has strength or the one who is weak? C come on, people, we, we just have to ask ourselves that. See what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 12. Verse 7. Second Corinthians uh, 12, verse 7. See what the Bible says about this. And lest I should be exalted above measure th uh, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. You see what is... It, it, Paul is saying... A messenger of Satan is always <laughs> buffeting him, trying to show him, come on, no, 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 there's a problem with you, eh, 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 follow me, follow me, there's a thorn in your flesh, there's something that is, uh, you know, pricking you, follow me, follow me, forget about the God that you're trying to, there's always the messenger of Satan in all of us, near all of us, everywhere, trying to show us, that, uh, come on, you have a thorn in the flesh. Come on. Uh, thorn in the flesh is basically, they want to prick you to show you that uh, your body cannot maintain without, uh, you know, uh, doing evil. Come on, go and beat that person. Just be corrupt. Just be, uh, do all those evil things. There's always a thorn in the flesh. Something um, which is making you to feel that, uh, I just want to go and do this wrong thing. There's always a message of Satan. <laughs> near trying to prick you and it will all depend with are you going to listen to him or are you going to step on him and tell him no 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 it's not going to happen satan no no i deny this all this should encourage believers today to take god as uh, at his word concerning our position in christ with respect to the devil our position in christ satan is defeated and we are different our position in Christ is, uh, you see, the Bible tells us about our position in Christ right now. Matthew uh, 4, verses 1. See your position in Christ. See. Then was Jesus led up in the, uh, of the, 
Then Jesus was led, led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You see? And I want to show you our position in Christ. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. He felt hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that the stones be made bread. What did Jesus answer? See the position that we have in Christ. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see, you see our position? When Satan comes with his lies, you should tell him, It is written. It is written. And of course, you can read down there, you see the other uh, temptations, which uh, uh, also were there. It is written. And the same also, it's a, just go and check um, Luke 4, I, I, I don't want to take much time, Luke 4, 1 to 13, but uh, let me read uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 10, uh, 13. Let me show you. you. You have to understand, you have to understand your position in Christ. There has no temptation taken you as such is common to man. There is no temptation which is new, nothing new under the sun. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able? But with the temptation will also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So Satan will come and tempt you and tell you, oh, there is always a way out. God will never bring a temptation which you cannot be able to escape. Nothing. You will not be able to bring any temptation or to allow, God does not tempt people. He will not allow any temptation which you cannot be able to uh, 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 go through, be able to come to you. And of course, I don't want to take much time on these uh, topics. You can go and read Second Thess uh, Corinthians uh, 4, 1 to 7, and James uh, 4, 6 to 8, and First uh, John 2, uh, 15 to 29, and First John 4, uh, 1 to 3. You can read those. And uh, of course to understand our position, especially as we remember this grand truth, this greatest truth. There is a great truth and let me, let me just read this one final truth that you have to understand. See what the Bible tells us. First John, mm, first John 4, 4, 4, 4. See, this is the ultimate truth. This is the ultimate truth. You are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Because greater, greater is who? He that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is in the world? Satan is in the world. So, Satan is out here in the world. Tempting you and lying to you how big he is. But greater is he that is in you. God has already defeated Satan and is in you, inside you. So, this whole story of why uh, Satan would be let loose. It will be to show people that uh, put your allegiance to God because he's the one. He's the one who has all the ultimate goodness. Satan is all but a liar. He's all but a liar. And if you're out there and you've never believed in the gospel, you're still following Satan. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I deliver unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. That is the whole gospel. You understand how and why Jesus had to die. How did he die? He shed his blood at the cross. Why? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Why is the blood important? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Why do we have to shed blood? Because all man has sinned, and the wages of sin is death, and you are supposed to die. But Jesus... While he was still sinners, he died for us. And he wants us to take that, that, uh, that payment of sin and put it unto ourselves. We believe in him. How can we take that payment? By faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you believe in the gospel and then you're saved, my friends. And then you confess to God. The Bible says you have to confess. If you confess with your mouth that Christ is Lord... You'll be forgiven, you know, all, all, all that. So what do you confess? You confess what you know. You can confess what you don't know. You confess what you know. You tell Jesus, Jesus, I know you died for my sins. You were buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. I believe now. I understand and I believe. And I know that, Jesus, you did this all for me. Please forgive me and help me to become a new creature. 
And God will do that and you'll be saved. And all these deceptions of Satan, they will not come upon you. Satan is but a deceiver. Just a big, big, big deceiver. He's been deceiving mankind from time and time immemorial. Don't be a part of him. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Please, if you like this video, uh, you can share, you can uh, give it a thumbs up, and also you can uh, subscribe and uh, press the notification button so that you don't miss a new video. We always post new videos every day to make sure we edify the body of Christ. God bless you, and have a blessed, blessed time.